Well, we're all familiar with the Jamesons and Paris whiskies, but did you know there are over 90 whisky brands to experience here at the Irish Whiskey Museum in the heart of Dublin? So ahead of St. Patrick's festivities this weekend, I decided to learn more. Did you know that Irish whisky was once the most popular spirit in the world? It was said that whisky was first recorded in Ireland in 1405. And as mentioned already, some of the bigger brands like Jameson, Powers and Paddy are known across the world for their taste. This little gem of a museum is divided up into four different sections that inform visitors about the history of Irish whisky. Situated right in the centre of Dublin City since last November, the museum is going from strength to strength. So Michael, we are here in the Irish Whisky Museum. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. I didn't even know it was here. How long are you here? Just opposite Trinity College in the heart of Dublin. We opened on the 8th of November and we've been running tours every day since except Christmas Day. Really? So it's busy already? Yeah, it's going very well. With the Irish whisky industry is booming now at the moment, so we kind of expected that. I originally thought whisky is kind of associated with being an old man's drink, but not anymore. No, that was a preconception for uh, many years in Ireland, but. The boom in Irish whisky sales in America uh, was predominantly with the 25 to 35 year old crowd and that's actually started coming in into Ireland as well and we've noticed that with our guests here, they're uh, all quite young. So who's the typical customer coming through taking the tour? Well right now it's um, uh, foreign tourists, usually backpackers or uh, young people on a, on a, on a year out of college. Okay. Um, Americans mostly but a lot of French, Germans, almost every nation of the world. Well, I've had a little look around, but you're going to talk us through the various rooms on, on the tour here. So room number one, I suppose, is all about the origins of whiskey and the history, isn't it? Yeah, basically what we do is uh, we take you back from the golden age of whiskey in that room, right back to the very start. We talk about how the monks picked up the art of distilling from the Moors in Spain. Uh, how they um, use it as a, as a medicine, basically, and how that developed into uh, whiskey distilling. And when the monasteries closed uh, with the Reformation, that uh, uh, tradition moved out into the community, and that's where basically whiskey distilling started. Next up is a visit to the old style she bean, where whiskey played an important role. Basically, uh, the, the, the art of distillation went two ways. It went uh, the taxable way and the non-taxable mm -hmm. way. And the she bean was the non-taxable way. There were illicit drinking houses uh, in the countryside. And basically, they uh, provided poaching for the residents of the local village. And if they were caught by the taxman, everybody in the village was fined. Um, also, they were used for likes of, the likes of wakes and things like that. So yeah, because I see a coffin here yeah. in the middle of the room. It's bizarre. It is. We talk about the Irish tradition of, of waking somebody, and we go through a little bit of some of the more um, traditional aspects of Irish culture, a little bit away from whiskey, but we talk about them in, in relation to the whiskey industry. Moving into the next room, this is the Victorian boom time. And it just looks like a bar, an old bar, doesn't well, it? Well, what we try to recreate in that room is uh, a traditional Dublin Victorian bar, uh, the, likes of the, the likes of which the tourists really uh, come to Dublin to see. It's very inviting, isn't it? It's a beautiful bar. And we talk in there about the great uh, whiskey houses, like the likes of John Jemison, William Jemison, Bushmills, Locks, and George Rose. Mm -hmm. George Rose is one I haven't heard of before, but it's one of the oldest, or the oldest, it's, is it? He was founded in 1757, and at its height he would have been by uh, two times the biggest distillery in Ireland, and he would have been probably the biggest distillery in the world at the really? time. And there's only one building left standing of George Rose, and it's called St. Patrick's Windmill, and it's in, on the, um, in the site of Guinness now, and you can see it there, it's the only thing left. Wow. Okay, and then we move into the room that we're sitting in at the moment, which has an array of old whiskey bottles. Yeah, we call this the Renaissance room because we chart the fall of Irish whiskey from Grays to go from one of the biggest uh, selling brown spirits in the world to being a very tiny domestic industry. And then we uh, chart its rise back up to where it is now and, and booming again. Mm -hmm. And where do you source all these bottles for the museum, Michael? Uh, well, uh, a lot of our um, 
exhibits in a museum come from pr uh, private collectors. Uh, so uh, all of the labels here, most of the labels here are original labels of bottles from different collectors. Okay, so they're on loan from the collectors? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow, it just shows how, uh, how important the industry is. Do we still export a lot of whiskey? We do, country? yeah, absolutely. And the exports in Irish whiskey have been uh, massive. Uh, America primarily, but now Eastern Europe, uh, the Far East and, and Africa. Now, whiskey wouldn't be my tipple of choice on a night out, but I thought it would be rude not to sample a little drop. For all whiskey fans, young and old, this museum is definitely worth a visit. Hidden in the hustle and bustle of Dublin City, it's a great place to learn about one of the most popular exports in the world and how it all originated from Ireland. Happy St. Patrick's Day!